Welcome to this video series on volume spread analysis. The idea behind this series is to provide a very good introduction to volume spread analysis or volume price analysis. As we all know, the human attention span is limited. Hence, I will limit each video to 15 to 20 minutes. This way, there will be a better understanding and each one can watch the series at his own pace and leisure. In this first part of the series, we will look at the history and the basic premises on which VSA or the VPA is based. Some of you may find this part a little boring or unnecessary. However, I strongly recommend that you do not skip this part as this will lay the basic foundation on which we will build the structure of VSA or VPA. Now, the first question which comes to our mind is what is volume spread analysis? Volume spread analysis or the VSA attempts to read the action of the smart money by reading the price action with close price spread and the volume. Now the other question would be why one should read the action of the smart money? By reading the action of the smart money, we follow these price actions and find opportunities to make money for ourselves along with the smart money. Now, what is the basic premise on which the VSA is based? The basic premise is that market is being manipulated by strong players. This was first mentioned by a person called Hoyle in 19, 1898 in a book called The Game in the Wall Street and How to Play It. Later, this concept was expanded and more practical application was made by Richard Wyckoff in the early 19th century. Of late, it has been brought into focus by Tom Williams in his book, Master the Markets. Of course, there are a lot of differences between what Tom Williams has done compared to what Richard Wyckoff did in the 19th century. In fact, Tom Williams gave sort of a structure to the work done by Richard Wyckoff, where we can read the price action by in a bar by bar action to understand the action of the smart money much better. Though the whole thing is based on Richard Wyckoff's works, but it, he made it a little more refined and more workable to read the charts based on the bar action. Now let me quote from Richard Wyckoff. Richard Wyckoff says, let us call him the composite man who in theory sits behind the scenes and manipulates the stocks to your disadvantage if you do not understand the game as he plays it and to your great profit if you do understand it. Wyckoff called the smart money or the strong hands as the composite man. And what he says is, if you understand what he's doing, you, you can make great profit. And if you do not understand what he's doing, you will have a great disadvantage. So he says, when large interests are planning a campaign in a stock, they lay the foundation. That is, they accumulate or distribute a quantity according to the size of the venture and, and the anticipated profits to be derived therefrom. 
So they actually do a campaign of accumulation and distribution in order to make money. And this is what we are planning to understand in terms of volume spread analysis. Now, there are four phases of manipulation by smart money or the strong hands. One, accumulation. Two, markup. Three, distribution. And finally, four, the markdown. So if you look at, this is sort of the cycle of campaign which the smart money does. And this is generally called the Wyckoff's market cycle. As you can see, there is an accumulation part here. Once accumulation is done, there is a markup, there is a distribution, and then there is a markdown. And this cycle repeats itself. So the smart money actually accumulates the stock here. Then the prices are marked up and once the prices are increased, there is a distribution where the smart money passes off the stock he has to the weak hands or the retail public. And once the complete distribution is done, then there is a markdown phase where the prices come crashing down and the weak hands keep holding the money and they exit when the prices are come down a lot. And this cycle is repeated where you can, as you can see, the smart money has made a lot of money in this whole cycle. Before we go into the details of the Wyckoff market cycle, let me narrate a small story. A story that will put the whole market manipulation in a nutshell. Many of you may have come across this famous story of the monkeys and the market. However, I will narrate it again for the benefit of those who have not heard it. There was a nice village which had a small population of monkeys as well. One day a trader arrived in the village and he offered a deal that he will buy a monkey at the rate of 100 rupees per monkey. The villagers thought it was a good deal and they started catching the monkeys and sell these to the trader. Soon the supply of the monkeys started getting reduced so the traders started increasing the prices. And as the supply exhausted more, the prices increased to much, much higher level. Then this trader slowly started selling his own stock to the villagers at much higher price. Many of the villagers started buying these monkeys in order to make a profit by reselling them at a much higher rate in anticipation that the prices will increase. Soon, the trader exhausted his stock of the monkeys and he stopped buying the monkeys. And one day he left the village with a promise of returning back soon, which he never did. So there was no demand for the monkeys anymore and the prices started crashing down to almost nil. So this is a clear example of how the market is being manipulated the trader created a demand by accumulating the monkeys and then started increasing the prices as the supply started reducing and slowly when the prices went up high he started distributing the monkeys back to the villagers and once his stock was exhausted he stepped back and then left. So there was no demand for the monkeys and the prices started crashing. So this is a clear example of how the market is being manipulated.
Now let's start looking at the wake of market cycle in detail. As we know, there are four phases, accumulation, markup, distribution and markdown. Now what is accumulation? Accumulation is a subtle, sophisticated and a sly process of cornering huge quantities of stock that makes the remaining three phases possible. As you can see in this chart, the prices were coming down. And then here, it started moving sideways. The market was sluggish, there was no interest in the stocks. However, the smart money or the strong hands have been accumulating the stock and the volume had already started dropping. And once the accumulation is done, the smart money is ready to mark up the stock. And you can see the stock broke out of the accumulation range on high volume, the widespread bar. Now starts the markup phase. The stock breaks out of the congestion zone usually on a high volume as we have seen in the previous chart. Then the stock moves up in stages. Each stage would be an advance on higher volumes and a retracement at lower volumes. Also, there could be some congestion areas or accumulation areas during the up move as well. And as the stock moves up much more, there could be these congestion areas could be distribution areas as well. So when the smart money or the strong hands feel now it's time to distribute or already they have done a lot of distribution, the markup phase ends. The ending can be in two ways. One, a rapid high volume up thrust and a buying climax. Or a congestion area where a subtle distribution takes place. So these are the two ways where the markup comes to an end. Distribution. Now what is distribution? Distribution is a process where the smart money or the strong hands offload their stock to the weak hands at higher prices. Like the trader was passing off the monkeys to the villagers, the, soft, the smart money offloads their stock to the weak hands at much higher prices. So distribution can happen during the uptrend as well or in congestion zones. Distribution happens in a stealthy manner, very hard to spot, invisible to the weak hands. And finally, when the distribution is completed, the markdown phase starts. The markdown phase, the supply overwhelms the demand, and the demand gets totally exhausted, and the supply is plenty, the prices start tumbling because there is no demand. Panic spreads and panic selling ensures. The weak hands keep waiting, we keep waiting in anticipation of higher prices and finally they panic and they start selling in panic. And that is the time the spreads of the bars or the candles start widening. So this is a clear example, again, the actual market where you can see there is the four phases of market manipulation. Clearly, there is an accumulation and there is a markup phase, a distribution and then a markdown here. This is a real life example of the four phases of Wyckoff market cycle. Here again, you can see accumulation, markup. As you can see here, the distribution is not in a range. The distribution has been completed in the markup phase itself. And finally, the markdown phase comes. One more example we will see here. 
here again an accumulation phase, a markup phase, here a small distribution phase, then the markdown phase. That we have looked at the market manipulation and how it is done in the four phases. Let's quickly look at three laws of Wyckoff. The first law of Wyckoff is law of demand and supply. And the second law is the law of cause and effect. And the last law is the law of effort and result. First look at the law of demand and supply. We all know that the demand and supply is what is running the market when the demand increases the prices increase and when the supply increases the prices decrease so this is the basic law on which any market functions so this is the law of demand and supply now the law of cause and effect as you can see the cause is the accumulation the effect is the markup and the law of effort and result every effort should have an equal result if there is an anomaly in the effort and result, that means there is something going wrong or going different in the market. We will look at the details of these later in our course. Before we close, finally let me quickly look at the accumulation patterns, Wyckoff accumulation schematic. So this is the typical Wyckoff accumulation schematic. We will go into the details of this towards the end of our full course. And this is the distribution schematic. This brings us to the end of this session. In the next part, that is part two of this video series, we will create the basic tools necessary for the study of ESA. In order to get notified for release of the future parts of the videos of this series, do subscribe to this channel. In case you find these videos useful, please do press the like button. Thank you.